In this video, I'll show you how to create a tabs interaction with Force Navigation. So once again, we're doing another interaction that you can add to your e-learning tool belt. This is a great uh, interaction and called for quite frequently when you have uh, lots of information that you wish to convey to your learner and you wish to chunk it out into individual stages or phases or steps in any kind of process. And of course, uh, it's not uncommon for a stakeholder to ask that you prevent the learner from moving forward until they've completed all of these steps or stages. So we'll do that with a little forced navigation. I'll show you how it's done. So as you can see um, by my slide here, I've got six tabs across the top. These are merely shapes used as buttons, as you can see in my properties inspector. I am selecting to retain the state on slide revisit because I'm thinking, you know, maybe if I left off at tab number four and I return to this slide, maybe go back and then forward, I want to see the content uh, that was left on the slide at the time here. And uh, of course, I've got this larger area down below. Now, its normal appearance is just this sort of off-white kind of color here. And uh, using the magic of multi-state objects, I was able to add a series of images and text captions for each one of these. And I've labeled all of these different states, tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four, to correspond with the tabs across the top. Now to make this work with, of course, a hidden next button, and as you can see, I've set the visibility to not visible on output, gave it a logical name, as I did for all of the objects on the slide. You'll see button one, button two, and this middle content area is called content object. So everything is labeled well, it helps making advanced actions uh, work a little bit better. And don't forget, if you are a download member of my YouTube channel, you can download a completed version of this interaction to do with as you see fit. Let's, of course, start doing this interaction. So this is going to require six advanced actions. Not to worry, though, we're going to write one of them, duplicate it, and make a couple of small changes to each version. And, of course, we need to keep track of which tabs have been selected in order to do the force navigation bit. So we're going to need six different variables. Let's start off by creating those variables. So I'm going to click the Project drop-down menu and select Variables. I'm going to click Add New, and we'll call these variables underscore tab one, and we'll give it an initial value of zero. We'll hit save, we'll add new, tab two, give it a value of zero, save. Repeat this until we have all six of our tab variables. And now that we have all of our variables set up, we can Go ahead and close the variables window. Now we can write the first of our six advanced actions. So we'll click on the project drop down menu and select advanced actions. If an existing advanced action opens up, just click on the create a new action and we'll start to write this here. So we'll call the first one tab 01. Now we're going to need to create two tabs, if you will, within this here. So we're going to start off with our first decision tab of our advanced action, and we'll call this one press. This is pressing the button that, or pressing the tab in question. And we're going to assign a value to our variable, first of all. So we'll select the second column here by double clicking on it and finding the assign tab. Pro tip, if you press the letter A, it will jump to the list of actions that start with the letter A, so I can select a sign really easy. I'm going to choose my variable, tab 1, 
and I'm going to assign a literal value of one to it. Next, we're going to change the state of our individual buttons themselves. So each button has a selected state. We'll start with button one and make sure that's selected. And then of course, I can change the state of button two to normal in case it had already been selected. Same thing for button three, back to normal. Button four, back to normal. Button five, back to normal. And finally, change the state of button six back to normal. And lastly, what we want to do is change our content object to the appropriate state associated with whichever button we're working with here. So in this case, button one or tab one, we'll change the state of our content object to tab one. And that takes care of the first part of our advanced action. Now we're going to click on another decision tab. And in this case, we're going to do a conditional advanced action. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the value of all the variables that we've created for each of the tabs and see if they've all been pressed. Or in other words, they've all been assigned a value of one. So we're just going to say if variable tab one is equal to the literal value of one. And what we can do to save a few steps here is we can copy this line and then paste it into the subsequent lines here. And we'll just make a small change. The only problem is you run out of uh, the possibility of adding new lines when you get to the fourth one here. So if you need more if statements, you can just click the add icon here and do it a second time. And now we can paste in copies of those actions here. So we'll just check to see if tab two is equal to one, tab three is equal to one, tab four is equal to one, and of course, tab five and tab six. So once they're all equal to one, we're going to show the next button. There it is there. And of course you can give this decision tab a name. I sometimes will call it completion check uh, or sometimes just completion since check doesn't show up. And I can save this as an action, click okay. And we can return to the first tab here. We need to duplicate this five more times. Now at first, that sounds like that's going to take a lot of time, but conveniently Adobe Captivate gives you this duplicate action icon here. We're going to press that and we'll create a new action called tab two based on the previous advanced action. So all we need to do is change which variable we're assigning a value of one to. So we'll choose variable tab two. We'll change which button we're showing as selected. So we'll return button one back to normal and show button two as selected. And we'll change our content object to tab two. So we can update that action and that's good to go. There's nothing to change on our second decision tab. Just a three small changes to the beginning part here. And now we're just going to duplicate it four more times until we have all four uh, additional advanced actions that we need. So with the final um, advanced action created, we just simply click on update action and we can close the window. What we can do now is we can select all of our buttons 
These buttons, of course, the default action for any button is to go to next slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all of their success actions at the same time to execute advanced actions. And once it's done, you'll see a list of all of the advanced actions that are here. Somehow I ended up with a duplicate of tab four. Uh, I'll have to double check that, but I think that's just an erroneous copy of it here. I'm gonna select tab zero one for all of them. So I'm assigning them all to do the exact same thing. What I can do on a case by case basis is just change the tab two button to run the tab two advanced action and tab three and tab four and tab five and tab six. So I think we're good to go here and we can test this out. So let's preview in HTML5 in browser. So now we have our interface up and running. Tab one will show the content related to tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four, tab five. And even if I press these individual tabs number of times, I don't see my next button until I press all six of them. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.